Whenever you guys are ready, I can start opening the channel for some questions. So one per message would be best. So we can go through as many as possible. Sorry, I say that again. I just uh, made a change here, but I just had a little bit. Uh, no worries. I just told everyone that uh, it's preferably one question per message so we can get to as many as possible. And uh, yeah, whenever you guys are ready, I can start opening the text channel. Yeah, um, set them free. Might as well get a head start on some questions. All righty. <laughs> there we go. Respect for Omega James first. <laughs> I can answer that one. Pretty easy. Pretty easy, easy to answer. Yeah. Crack, go ahead. Start her up. So, um, yeah, we have a screen bob feature. Uh, we've actually tuned it down twice already because we have a couple people on staff who are a bit more sensitive to things like that. And uh, after a couple minutes of playing with the original bob settings, they're actually getting nauseous. So we've tuned it down, and chances are... What I'm hoping is we'll be able to expose it, you know, uh, maybe as an option, so you can kind of adjust that intensity a little bit if you want a bit more of that immersion, and uh, you're not negatively impacted by it. And then uh, in terms of taking hits, we do have a hit reaction system as well. So, you know, when you get an AC20 in the right arm, the mech will actually currently, uh, you know, jolt off to that side a little bit uh, in reaction, which we can also tune the intensity of. Uh, do you know the mask answer there, Alex? I'm not sure I do. You read that one. I'll uh, look at this next one. Uh, does MechWare 5 have double arm and structure amounts like MWO? Uh, I believe, yes, it does uh, across the board. You correct me if I'm wrong there, Alex, but I'm pretty sure that's right. Sorry, yeah, for the mask thing, I can't comment on that just yet. Okay. Um, and then, uh, oh, double, sorry, yeah, double, armor, the, double armor and structure. Yeah, we're taking, as a default, we took all of the, the base values from Max for MWO as a starting point. So, yes, currently they are all doubled. Yeah, I suppose we could change that, but I think we, personally, I like having um, fights last a bit and brawl things out so i kind of like where it is but that that's something we can obviously tune as we as we get closer um so raining fire here i know he's been working on this question for a bit um we've seen and heard multiple huds and bitch and betty's mechware 5 gameplay vids where there be multiple options to choose from in game um my answer to that is i'm not sure it's just uh i think it sounds simple enough it's as far as the bitch and betty options anyhow I would say with HUDs, don't expect multiple HUDs upon release. Um, just again, because we're, you know, just going to be pushing all of our effort and all of our energy just to get this game out and have it be as good as possible. Maybe, maybe the stretch um, bonus goal would be there's some options with like the paper doll having the H tau and things like that. So maybe. Um, I think that's a really good target for modders. Um, the Bitch and Betty, I think, is easier for us to provide multiples of. Again, that seems like a really good target for modding people. Um, and I guess that's I'll answer that for now. I think that's – I'm not sure if the default base game upon, upon launch will have multiple options. I understand your interest in it, and it does seem like – I know that's something that a lot of people are interested in. So we can think about that and see if it's something that we can do uh, for release that won't be too – Time intensive, but again, I think that's just going to be such uh, you know easy low hanging fruit for mod people. I'd be shocked if there isn't lots of things within that first thirty days, probably in that category. Um, good question to show up at the AMA and and talk to Brian about that stuff. Um, yeah, so this I just I just sorry I was just reading the rest of the question there, but 
Yeah, we'll put that in our notes. Um, and we'll see if we can have something day one there. Will the game include any sort of knockdown mechanics? Boy, that's a tough one. Um, right now, I would say it's not in the plans for day one. It's such. It's definitely an easier thing for us to do um, in MechWarrior 5 than it was in MechWarrior Online. MechWarrior Online being a PvP game and hit detection, client server, whole state rewinds, all those sort of things are so complex when it comes to things like knockdowns. In the case of MechWarrior 5, it's really just a capacity thing and a fun thing. It's like, can we make it fun without it being taking the game to this extreme level of simulation that a lot of people in this chat might say, yeah, really cool, but it might also limit us to the point of, you know, uh, us not becoming wide enough or of a game. So, and then it's just a really capacity on animation. Um, it really does have to be a custom animation for, uh, each mech, and we really can't get away with sort of what, um, you know, Battletech did, which they, all the mechs just kind of uh, are on their particular hex square and then have a kind of a, all have a similar stand up animation. Um, so, this is something that is in a category of we still need to talk about this and see if it's something that we're going to um, be able to think about to include for day one. So, I would put knockdowns and melee attacks in the same category. They're not things that I've totally given up on. It's just like, I think we have to have the base game super dialed in and, and you know, have a great um, 80 plus percent type of product we think in our hands before we would go to those efforts on those areas for day one. So I can take the next one here, Stone Falcons. Can we build relationships in game with other popular Merc units, uh, which evolves the timeline progresses? Sorry, I just missed my scroll there. Example, Wolf Dragoons and Kellhounds. Uh, so right now, the Merc life really just control or um, tracks your relationships with the great houses and the contract providers. So you may see these mercenary factions uh, units elsewhere. You may fight against them. Um, but in terms of an overarching relationship or uh, you know ongoing kind of theme of conflict with these uh, units, um, not at the moment, no. In the beta, what would be co-op? Yes, um, absolutely. Uh, in co-op play, will a player be able to have another PC, have control of another lance? Um, no, this, you know, everything about MechWarrior 5 is designed around, you know, the Lance encounter. That's something that could grow in future updates, and I suppose there's maybe a small possibility that in the, you know, in the Instant Action Manager, um, things could go beyond a Lance, but certainly the single-player experience is built around a Lance. So I guess the safe answer is think of the game as a Lance and you and your buddies all being in the same Lance with maybe, I think, whether it's post-release target or what, I think... Instant Action Manager does have um, the chance to go beyond a lance, but uh, not something that's you know a plan for initial release. Uh, Imperius has got a follow-up question to this morning there, um, Alex. Um, um, this is uh, yeah, this is you don't really you build a mercenary unit, you don't really build an empire, Imperius. I mean, you are. Um, a mercenary unit and you can I, I'm not going to give you an exact cap on the number of like mechs and pilots you can own I mean you can we can take a stab at that and think well maybe you can have maybe you can have a dozen maybe you can have two dozen mechs um, and pilots but ultimately you're going out in the form of a lance and building up a mercenary unit so it's about taking your reputation from total noob getting the worst missions on earth it's like you your starter mech you're going out and doing some very basic missions during sea bills, so on and so forth, earning reputation, earning negotiation points, um, paying your bills, working your way up, go to the market, eventually maybe getting a secondary, second small mech, or maybe selling your small mech and pulling your money to get a small medium, and any way you want to do it, and work your way around the inner sphere, and work through this career, and get to the point where you're, of course, working through your story missions the whole time, uh, get an alert, elite mercenary status where you can take out you know entire elite uh, battle on mech lance and you know win the game. 
So you can think of your empire really as being your dropship, your collection of mechs, your collection of pilots, your inventory of equipment, um, your reputation, and of course, completing the, the, the main story arcs and so on and so forth. And in terms of customization of the dropship, that was an early design. Um, when we first started, you know, working through this concept of the physical hangar, the physical dropship, and this kind of persistent hub, um, it's been pretty much cut since then. Um, but customization of that area is something that you know, every now and then does still come up. So we may look at that in the future. But uh, for now, there is um, there is no customization of the dropship itself. Uh, Chiefs and console commands. I think I don't. That is something we've really thought about. That I mean, we have an entire cheat menu. Um, I, I, I kind of envision a world since it's a single player game. There's no real reason for us to not uh, provide some sort of like shortcut, um, you know, thing uh, that you pass in and just unlock the cheat menu. So, yeah, I, I don't see that as being something we're like against or anything. I mean, do whatever you want in your single player game. You know. Uh, I can talk a bit about the music. Um, I guess uh, certainly Sean, who you guys know, uh, who composed the music for MechWarrior Online. All the stuff you've known in MechWarrior Online is, is composing the music for MechWarrior 5. Um, maybe he gets some more help. Maybe we involve some more people. That's not totally decided yet. Uh, but uh, you've essentially we're going for... Uh, you know, a Mercenaries theme soundtrack here, which, you know, to me and to us and me and Sean, as we've talked, is a, a really sort of a more of a heavy guitar, you know, metal type of soundtrack. So um, it's definitely not like, uh, you know, I guess like Battletech's, which had obviously great music, but, it, you know, it suited it very well. Um, more of a, you know, um, symphony sort of type style stuff. Uh, the And there'll be a lot of, if you saw in the demo, which is a very early version of it, but there's a lot of transitioning between uh, just very gentle, ambient stuff. Seems like we're cutting up a little bit, the connection, because uh, we can't hear us at the moment. Yeah, you're kind of dropping out a little bit too, actually. Am I? Okay, let me try and quickly change the server location and see if that helps. Testing, is this better? Might be. Ross, can you hear us? One sec. Sorry, guys. One moment. Hi. Oh, there you are. Yeah, sorry about that. Where did I cut off at? Uh. <laughs> I was answering the question of how many Macs. And I don't know if you guys heard that at all. No, you. I'm pretty sure you cut out in between the, uh, the soundtrack. Yeah. Okay. Soundtrack answer was received, though. Metal, mercenaries, Qataris. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah. Just it. Okay. Um, I was going to say, uh, okay, I'll just repeat something. I got a few messages that maybe they didn't get all that. So very quickly, I'd say it's a combination of some ambient music at quieter moments. And then as you get into combat, there will be a dynamic music system that ramps up into more of the heavier guitar riff, mercenaries theme music. 
So that's the way the music, that's the style of music. You know, Sean, who's done the MWO music, is working on it. Maybe we'll get him some help too. Um, and that's, I think, the best we can do. Uh, and, and I agree that McQuarrie too, <clears throat> music was great. Um, we just have a little more, it's not just a, a straight soundtrack like it was back in the McQuarrie 2 days. You do have a lot of, you have your ambient music, more similar to McQuarrie 2, I guess. And then you have the transition and ramp up into more of the heavier, um, heavier metal stuff. How many mechs will we have in beta? <clears throat> I believe there's no real reason for us to be limiting the mechs in the beta. You know, based on when the beta is happening, uh, we'll be wanting to test everything. So it might be all of them. Unless we come up with some reason that we need to hold some mechs back for marketing reasons or uh, just you know, that type of stuff, um, they'll probably all be in there. So it could mean hundreds in, when you get to variants and such. We may not have told them how many chassis we're looking at right now. Should we... Uh... I believe I said that this morning. Um, is it 50 or 55 chassis? I forget. Yeah, yeah it's around there. 50, and then, 50, 50, 50. You know, anywhere to four to six variants each. So, you know, we're looking at 200 to 250 variants, let's say. Oh, the Urban Mac is one of them. How much are we giving away? Did we just say it was? It is one of them. It is, of course. Uh, no to the land holds question. Ixnay on that. Um, you're moving around. You're being hired by people. You're not looking to put down roots. Although, in the story... Um, yeah, we'll leave that secret. Okay. Uh, virtual reality. Um, as we've answered a few times at MechCon, I did this morning, is I, I see a world where virtual reality could happen for this game. Um, and I think day one is possible, but I think for us to put our development time towards it, we'd have to see, I think, kind of a, a greater increase in um, adoption rates and demand and I think our priority should be to make sure we get a dang good game launched. And then once that happens, this could be in the form of follow-up support. And it is quite, you know, easy in Unreal, like, you know, knock on wood. It, it really comes down to the performance of the game and making sure that you have enough frames per second to support it. And um, so I wouldn't, I don't know. I kind of put this at a 50-50 thing for day one, um, but gets probably 75% or higher on, on not too far post-release. So, I know those that, are, that have the, the VR headsets and would love to play as VR. I think chances are pretty good. So there's a question about how that, long, but uh, yeah, co-op. Whenever I skip one, it's because I meant. Yeah. Oh, you. <laughs> well, I mean, we have an answer for that. Oh, okay. Go ahead and answer. Well, so yeah, I mean, current co-op structure is such that when you join somebody else's session, you're joining their universe and. You are essentially, and Russ touched on this a little bit this morning with the pilot system, um, you are adopting one of their pilot personas, so you're accessing the stable of max that that player has uh, in their universe. When it comes to instant action, there will be a lot more flexibility, obviously, in terms of everyone having access to whichever max. There's, there's no real reason to restrict those in instant action. And we will be you know, exploring the ability for instant action uh, being able to pull in some of your own specific mechs. But uh, at least for the main co-op campaign, it's uh, up to the users, uh, the hosts, stable. How long is the single-player campaign? Um, you know, I feel like we'll have a really good answer for that soon. We'll leave that for a future AMA. I guess... It's just really up to us to kind of figure out the sweet spot because certainly the game could be exceptionally long overall when you're talking about the entire career. And it really just tunes it to how many how many missions do we require per reputation level before the next, you know, story mission is unlocked, et cetera. And, you know, it could be 50, 60, 80, 100 hours if we wanted it to, um, including all the generated missions in between the handcrafted story missions. So... And then, of course, you have the replayability of starting the game in all five different starting locations with five different starter mechs. So I think for now, the simple answer is just to say it's a big game. 
and the experience is going to be long. And we just we still need time on tuning the economy and the game itself to find the right spot. Don't want to make it just long for the sake of being long, but um, it's a big game, and and I think uh, it's you won't be you know left feeling like you finished MechWarrior Five in like eight hours or something like that, like some past games. Uh, do mechs have quirks? Well, not in the sense like you're used to an MWO. Um, a, a base variant chassis is a base variant chassis. There are manufacturers' weapons in the world, so those weapons come with specific flavor, which is essentially like having quirks on them. So you might choose medium lasers made by a particular manufacturer for reasons of range or something that you like. And... We haven't um, ruled out the possibility of technicians being able to apply a, a chassis, chassis-wide quirk to your mechs in certain situations. I, right now, I think I consider that a, a good idea, one we really like, but is on our um, nice-to-have list at the moment. Uh, certainly, the weapon manufacturers are quirk-like, and possibly technicians providing chassis-wide quirks. Yeah, and the, and the cork system we do have for equipment is is essentially for equipment in general as well. So weapons um, and any other pieces of uh, you know heat sinks and jump jets. So uh, it's more of an equipment based cork system. At the when MechWarrior Five is released, what will happen with MechWarrior Online? Um, uh, well, nothing. Really, I meaning like nothing should change. It's completely up to the player base and you know those playing it. But uh, there's there's no plans at Piranha Games to you know stop Equa Online or anything like that. Uh, they both provide completely different things. Still, you cannot play PvP multiplayer in MechWarrior Five, and you can't play co-op or single player in MechWarrior Online. So. Understandably, people are wondering, thinking, well, if everyone's playing MechWarrior 5, who's going to be left in MechWarrior 9? And I guess, you know, we'll just have to see. Um, I, I still feel like there's a lot of people that are going to be playing MechWarrior Online because it just provides something so specific. You just won't be able to get that anywhere else except in MechWarrior Online. So um, it'll, it'll continue to answer your question. A uh, question about curveball missions. <laughs> missions where you're sent to patrol against a possible attack that never comes, ambushes, um, clients lying about the nature of the mission. Um, some of that, yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll Just go into yes specifics in a moment. Yeah. Yes. You say yes to Michael real quick there. Oh, that, is, that is yes. Uh, streaming the beta. Um, there's no promise yet, as the FAQ says. It's like we don't know yet, and here's why we don't know. Um, there's one of the big things that we'll need to do around the game's release is provide review codes to the press and media, and that means a lot. They're going to be under embargo, of course, to not release those reviews until a particular point, just within you know how that usually works within a few days of the game's release or within a week or whatever. And obviously, we can't be just streaming the whole game while they're embargoed. So I don't think it'll be an issue, though, because the beta itself is 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 not going to be giving away the whole game. It's not going to be giving away the whole story campaign. Like, we don't want to spoil it, you know. So it'll almost certainly, I don't know this for sure, but I anticipate that the beta will be like the instant action manager screen with full co-op support so people can set up their own mission scenarios with co-op or not co-op in AI and go out and play in the Instant Action Manager four-player co-op or with AI. And that's my anticipated kind of sense of what the beta will be, which means that it'll probably be fine to stream it. Uh, but this is something that still needs to be worked out between us and the PR firm and everything at the time. So be prepared for the possibility of having to sign NDA and to not stream it. But obviously our goal would be that there'd be people would be able to stream it and uh, influencers and everyone and getting, you know, everyone all pumped up about uh, the game. Because if everyone's loving that and thinking that's awesome and they still haven't even played the single-player campaign yet, 
um, obviously that'd be great. Let's move on to zombies blood. Uh, well, I mean, the target audience is MechWarrior fans, but like I've said a few times before, this is definitely there's going to be some things in MechWarrior 5 that are designed around capturing a much larger MechWarrior giant robot fan base. Some of those things would be uh, the fact that there is a you know more of a tutorial in the beginning and there's more of a ramp up, so the initial missions are very, very small, very simple like miniature story missions kind of pushing you through, but also things like a very um, complex or not complex, a very robust third person camera system because there is no concerns. There is no worry about um, uh, what am I trying to say here? Like uh, uh, PVP notions of competitive play or anything like that. So if someone's really great at, you know, third person, that's the way they really prefer to play it. Um, those sort of things, there's a number of things kind of in that category, maybe even things that might, you know, auto center their torso if they're bumped into a wall too long and just things that we don't need to worry about since we're not a PVP game, anything that might help more people have a good experience and hopefully, you know, really revitalize the larger audience of Mech Warrior of days past. So I think that gives you a sense. It's certainly at, a, at its core, it's very Mech Warrior and it's certainly much, much deeper than any, you know, large publisher would go with this game, but uh, much more pure McWire. But we're definitely going to have a few things like a, a robust third-person camera and a number of other helpful things to help newbies. Can I answer the next one? Yeah, so think, let me answer uh, that one again. Maybe. So, yeah, I was surprised at how many comments we got on that with the trailer and the MechCon demo, and some people kind of foresaw that, but... Yeah, actually, the we actually have a it's already complete like a pretty robust slow field system we call it. So any destructible object in the game has a a field around it as you enter it that will slow the mech down, and we can have it cause damage or do a number of things. And we just didn't really have time to tune it really well for the mechcon demo. So essentially, it was just removed, and it was like just smashing everything. We thought, well, let's, we're not going to have it totally tuned. Let's just go for fun of just like just like plowing through buildings and stuff. And honestly, it's really fun when you play it. But I guess watching the videos and stuff, it looks a little too buttery easy. So yeah, the easy answer is yes, there will be. A massive mech going through a tiny building might look like it's going through like you saw in the video, like nothing. And then that same mech going through, you know, a head high building might uh, it might slow you right down to half speed and perhaps even cause minor minor damage based on the type of building. You know, a locust is going to have a tough time going through some of those bigger buildings. So, yes, all that's already developed, too, is not even a risk point. Um, you'll probably start to see more of that in future trailers as we tune that. Full list of mechs. Um, I'm not going to just release the full list of mechs. I think that's boring. So what we'll do is, you know, weekly screenshots and over the course of the next three, four, five, six, seven months, you'll find out what all the mechs are. So I know it's less fun for you to go out theory crafting or whatever, but I think that's the way we'll handle it. Not really understanding Derek's question too much. Will we see any content regarding events before MechWire 5, such as a prequel? Not getting it. You got that, Alex? Or what? Yeah, I mean, well, I'll, I'll interpret it at least, maybe. Um, so there's nothing really, like, you know, playable in terms of the events prior to. And if it's a question regarding, you know, future releases, uh, you know, uh, like, nothing to comment on at this time. Um, you'll have some story elements that will be kind of doled out through the campaign that will give you some insight into events that occurred before the time in which you're playing, but it's really just focused on the uh, the time period that we're looking at. How are you planning to help Macquarie 5 and MWO grow together, strengthen each other? 
I don't know how to answer that question other than we can cross market between the games. You've seen that with the pre-order. It's so directly linking to each other. Uh, the MechWarrior 5 website is talking all about the MWO content. The MWO web website's talking about the pre-order. We'll continue to do as much of that stuff as we can together. Um, but they won't be like linked together as far as like the accounts like linked in some way where they share the universe and like transferring of mechs and you know things like that. With CryEngine versus Unreal 4, um, it's just those sort of things aren't worth the you know development effort. It'd be better to focus on future um, updates, future content, and just expanding each product in the best way possible. To Revenant's question, it's kind of similar. It's a totally different engine, MechWarrior 5, compared to MechWarrior 9. So, I mean, a lot's changed or improved. I would say, obviously, visuals, um, the destructibility system of the mechs. We should leave that for a future art AMA, but that's a, that's a big conversation in and of itself. Um, there's like 30, 33 different destructible uh, levels between the 11 components. 22 different model swaps, something like that. It's intensely better. And then, of course, the entire destructible environment. NWO has really none. So uh, the list is long, I think, but that's a great um, kind of art AMA stuff to go into better details, I think. Uh, mech stable. Oh, how is our mech stable? Infinite. Um, that's a good question. I we have not decided on a limit yet. Um, there's no real reason for us to limit it. I think it'll come down to the economy of the game. So if there's probably a design decision still to finalize there, if does a mech in, you know, cold storage, uh, you know, like Battletech's, uh, cost you nothing? Uh, I guess if it costs you nothing, then uh, there, there really wouldn't be a reason to cap it. Um, if there was some kind of upkeep cost, I think people would just find that there's just a limit. I kind of lean towards more towards the idea of like, there should be some type of financial barrier um, that you have to sort of, you don't want to just have, you know, 100 max in cold storage. It doesn't seem very realistic that you could upkeep and keep all those costs and store all those max. But that's really from, an, from a front end perspective and from a game perspective, there's no real reason for us to have to limit limit it technically. I don't know, Alex, do you have anything to say on that one? Uh, not really. I mean, <clears throat> there is, like, just a ton on the technical side of things. There is a sense of a technical cap on, like, the number of active mechs with all the full loadout information, um, just so we don't inflate the save file um, too crazy. But, um, yeah, I think that's just the only addition I'll make. Are there going to be elementals? Um, not at day one release. Uh, the, the priority is to get this game up to this, you know, 34 year career from the 3015 to 3049 and go through the great story and have dozens and dozens of gameplay, and tons of replayability and all that. And obviously our hope is it's going to be pretty obvious what the first big major, you know, DLC pack should be for the game. And we hope we get to make it. And, but first we need this game to be successful. Is the need for MechWare 5 mechs, or is the need for MechWare 5 mechs influencing which IS mechs are being added to MWO? Um, I would say it it has at least a little bit. Um, when we've talked about what mechs to do, there's no doubt that I've been sitting in the room saying, okay, but it makes a lot of sense just in capacity and for our small studio to make sure whatever mech we're making, if possible, can work in both games. And obviously that hasn't always been the case. You know, we've still announced some, you know, Clan 2C mechs and everything, and they're not, you know, they're not going to be in the initial release of MechWarrior um, 5, but potentially in future DLC. So theoretically, hopefully we should be able to use, we'll get to use all of them. But the, for initial MechWarrior 5 release, yeah, it's impacted our decisions a little bit. Not something that demanded certain decisions, but influenced Uh, startup animations, aren't they, um, wouldn't that be similar to MWO, Alex? Or... Yeah, I mean, if he's referring to the mechs themselves, um, 
similar. You know, you more polish. Like if it's the beep bops of the hand moving around and yeah, stuff. yeah, beep boops. Yeah, we um I was actually talking about this today with the technical artist. Um, we're looking into some things. All right, I think we answered this next one yet. Omega James, when you answered that earlier. Uh, as to RHO there, Ro, um, yeah, no, I mean, we're going to, that's not, that's difficult for me to answer right now, but I mean, um, boy, it's just, we'll see, you know, I mean, but my initial reaction is positive. My initial reaction is like, yeah, of course, you know, if, if our time with, uh, you know, making new mech games is, you know, if it comes to an end or something, then it's like, okay, we probably would do that. Um, if we were able to make more, then, you know, maybe we'd, we wouldn't. We'd hang on to it and, you know, release stuff officially before people got it. So, you know, ear to the ground. It's going to be, you know, it's going to be the summertime before I have a better idea of that probably, or even when the, after the game's released. That should give you some sense of my thoughts. Will we be able to keep playing after the story missions are done? Um, we've talked about this. We, I would say we're not positive yet, but I think the last time we talked about this, Alex, we were kind of the mindset of like, yeah, there's no reason to, to not let people continue. Um, but we probably, the game clock would probably stop. Um, so maybe you'd continue on the 3049 time period and just kind of continue on at that top level for as, you know, as long as you want. And then eventually you're going to, maybe just do a re replay it again because you have five different starting locations and starting locations will have some impact because it'll change what your starting mech is. It'll change where you are when you start. So who you're fighting when you initially start and what kind of mechs are on the market when you initially start. So, um, yep. You, I, I don't know for sure. It's, it's quite possible. We can, we could allow people to uh, continue on. There's no real reason for us to not do it. We could just, you know, freeze the clock and say, all right, carry on. And here's my caveat time. I'll just say we're doing our best in these AMAs, but um, some of these some of these decisions should change, could change as we get closer. Uh, you cannot have more than four mechs in your lens. You can own more than that. You can have mechs in storage and even in cold storage, and you might own fifteen. Uh, but you're going to take four out. Warhorns in Mech 5. <clears throat> um, no plans yet. Um, yeah, I guess let's, let's leave it at that for now. I mean, right now, customization, there's full pattern support for your mech, but we haven't explored the notion of going into the cockpit yet. So I think that's something we still have to uh, explore. I don't know if we're looking at post uh post support of Macquarie 5 or something. I don't know what the breakdown is for Canadian Falcon there, Alex. Um, of those 50 to 55 uh, unique chassis, um, I don't know if it's fairly evenly distributed or what. Yeah, offhand, uh, offhand I don't recall. It's, uh, the differences aren't too significant uh, between Uh, so mech lab question. Uh, we went to a lot about this this morning, but we should go over it again. Um, custom weapon loadout. Yes and no. I mean, it's, you do have a mech lab. You can customize your mech. You just can't customize them to the level of MWO. I mean, MWO is probably the most, you know, it's not even probably, it's the, the most complex, you know, mech lab there's ever been by a long shot. You can do anything in there essentially. But a lot of times, as people complain in Mech Online that, you know, a particular mech can kind of negate a million other chassis because of what you can do with the mech lab. So our rule of thumb with limiting the MechWare 5 mech lab was primarily to say we have an entire game built on this 34-year career, traveling the inner sphere, getting salvage, perhaps even getting chassis of salvage, and going to the free market everywhere you travel and looking for mechs to buy and purchase. And when you see a particular mech hit the market, 
a particular variant, it should be like, oh, wow, I haven't seen that yet. That's really cool. And when particular technologies come online, like ferrofibrous, and you see the JR7F variant for the first time with ferrofibrous, that should be cool. We don't want you to just go to the mech lab and put it on your regular Jenner. So take that as a general rule of thumb, but you can go in there and you can adjust your armor and adjust your number of heat sinks and decide you don't like that small laser, you don't use it, take it off, use it to add more armor, um, put more ammunition, and uh, and that side of thing, do variant, um, or sorry, uh, manufacture equipment loadouts for your weapons. Uh, if that hopefully that answers your question, that's, that's what I got for you. All right. Um, I'm not sure whose idea it was on Discord. I kind of few people talking about it, but appreciate that. Um, Will there will it be a full co-op campaign with shared everything one player is leading the other to hire is just co-op? Um, I think we've answered this. I'll just quickly hit it again. Um, everyone could, it's a single player game primarily, right? So everyone's playing their own single player games, but to play as friends, you have a couple of options. You can just go to the instant action manager screen and like set up scenarios and one person plays host and invites some friends in. And if you've got one guy who wants to come play with you, you can just be the two of you plus two AI, AI pilots and, or any combination and just play missions like that. Or you can invite someone into your campaign and they can come in and, and play as one of your AI pilots. So that way, while they're playing with you and you're having fun, your AI pilot is continuing to scale up and get better and you don't lose those hours of all of a sudden that pilot's behind where the other guys were. So um, that's the design currently. That's kind of the scope of what we're pushing for. I know there's lots of great follow-up questions of like, well, can my friend bring his mechs into my bay and can my friend take rewards back with him? Those aspects are more stretch. The goal here really was let them come into your universe and play, go into his universe and play, or just go into Instant Action Manager and play with each other. That's kind of the initial release scope of uh, the co-op campaign. Exclusive mechs. Um, probably not. We're, you know, we're always are trying to provide as much value and support for Mechor Online as we can as well. And and so, like I said earlier, I think we've kind of our decisions on what mechs to make has kind of been like, well, what can we use in both? And so never say never, uh, but all of our story elements have, we kind of know what kind of mechs they're using. And there's some hints in our trailer. Um, there's some, you know, Alpha Lance mechs being used by our, you know, bad guys and, and our story and stuff. So um, never say never, but I don't think so. I think we just answer that the next one. My philosophical. Will MechWare 5 Mercies take anything from the older MechWare 2 Mercies game? Oh, geez. I mean, I think uh, everything I've said about the whole game is essentially like a, a building and taking a step from MechWare 2. I mean, we're on, you know, we're definitely on the, standing on the shoulder of giants, you know, MechWare 2 Mercenaries, MechWare 4 Mercenaries, and all other MechWare games, is, including MechWare Online. It is a significant influence for us as well. So taking lots from MechWare 2 Mercenaries, I think. I know it's kind of a general answer, but I just think that's it's just so true. You know, really, building off of all those past games. I think I answered about melee. It's not. I mean, we're not saying no yet, but melee fall downs, um, the animation work and hit detection for a first-person shooter style game is infinitely more complex than say like uh, the turn-based you know, biotech, um, the custom animation work and such. So. I think it's awesome. I think I'm not saying no. Uh, we need to make sure that everything else that was super dialed in and ready before we would jump on that. Perhaps that's a really great DLC too. So I guess we'll just leave it at that again. Um, ground vehicles. I I think certainly the way that what we'll have for sure, as you saw in the MechCon demo, like there will be times where you get ground vehicles as part of your unit. Um, usually they're NPCs from the mission, 
that are joining you and following you and becoming a part of what you're doing and they're fighting for you and they're fighting the enemy. Um, I think that's realistic for, you know, the initial release of the game. I don't think it's realistic that we have, you know, a whole area of the front end where you're buying and repairing and, you know, deploying vehicles as part of your unit. But I do think you'll have, I know you'll have, you know, friendly vehicles and units that will be with you and fighting with you at times based on the mission. Alex, hurry, I'm getting tired. Take a couple of Will we use the Comstar MRB? Um, I mean, the contracts are being distributed through, you know, the uh, MRB network. Um, it does, like, as a system, it doesn't play a significant role currently. Uh, it's more just a vector for delivering the contracts to the player. Uh, any plans for co-op wave survival mode or just campaign missions? Um, not in that sense. Uh, you know, there are maybe some mission types that have wave elements, so there is a wave component uh, that missions will use, but not in like the sense of a you know a horde mode or something like that. Just reading through some things here. Yeah, I'll do the lights one. Um... I think we're not going to be as scared of this as we were in MWO. Like, meaning, it's, I think MechWarrior, it's fair to say that MechWarrior 5 Mercenaries will be a little more of a traditional power creep type mentality as you get more and more in Elite and take the bigger missions that you do have just more and more and more heavier and assault missions or, or heavier and assault mechs. I think where lights come into play more in, in MechWarrior 5 will primarily be on mission type. Uh, so maybe there will be moments when you are at super elite status near the end of the game, but there's a mission type that is, you know, nighttime scouting and you still take out, you know, Raven 3Ls and things like that, but it's just a very hard, you know, scout mission. Um, so that's the way I see that. Um, but I do think there's definitely a little more of that classic power creep mentality to MechWarrior 5 as you progress um, to a degree. Uh, Link's Revenge, basically asking if it would be PvP is in a way, and I agree it could be fun, but we have MWO, and I would just say never say never. Um, there's a natural evolution of, of I know all people you know always talk about MWO 2 and stuff like that, and I don't have anything to announce about that today, but um, you could, and everyone, and everyone keeps saying, you know, when's MWO go to, to Unreal? So I guess I'll just say that, you never know where the evolution will take us, but obviously the evolution of of PvP, if, we, if we're talking about stuff beyond MWO, um, it's quite logical to think that it would build upon the work that we're doing in this new engine. So leave it that, that for now. There won't be any PvP, uh, certainly, um, out the gate in MechWarrior 5. Um, everyone can go to MechWarrior Online for that. And, uh, you know, I'm sure the modders will be coming up some things too, though. And so career mode, <clears throat> like post story, I assume you mean HBS Battletech. Um, so to be honest, I've actually been a little heads down on uh, developing Mech 5, so I haven't had the chance to play the update to HBS's uh, Battletech. Um, from what I know, um, not in that sense. Like we will be, you know, accounting for what does the end game look like, what does the post game look like. Uh, but in terms of a, you know, a specific uh, mode or a structured system. You know, right now it's more just using the uh, standard mercenary life uh, meta games that uh, meta game systems that already exist uh, in Mech Five. Yeah, I need to learn more about that too because I was under the impression that their career mode was just kind of more closely what MechWarrior Five is going to be, but maybe there's more to it. Uh, we don't have an answer for you at the moment on Solaris games. Uh, yep, yeah, there are biomes and vacuums. Um, there's moon environments and stuff like that already. Uh, Clan Max is, I'm just going to say, yes, eventually. I think I answered it in VR already. 
I would say if not on initial release, it would be soon after post release. I think we answered PVP. I think that's a natural progression of the technology and the framework we're building, but we just don't know yet. DFA, I think, really falls into that category of, you know, fall downs and melee that we've talked about a few times. Soundtrack, no, I'm not going to, you know, try to talk to Activision to see if I can't get the rights to the Macroy 2 Mercs. I know how difficult that conversation is going to be. It's basically impossible. So you guys will just have to do your own thing in the mod side, and you guys can do it and get away with it. You know, we can't, essentially. I think we've answered the Mech Lab one pretty heavily. MW2, we kind of answered that too. It's like, um, you know, this, yeah, I'm not going to jump into that right now. We could do that in future AMA. It's, it's really, I mean, it's quite awesome. Obviously, it's quite promising. I mean, you got, you basically recreated the combat, you know, elements and everything in, Mech, in, in Unreal 4. Um, you've got all the backend infrastructure, which is really platform agnostic, but then you just have, you know, significant work still to do and, uh, um, you know, the specific hit detection and networking. So there'll still be a ton of work, but um, like I say, it's, it's, it is a natural progression of the technology. It's just not something we're talking about right now. There are no underwater levels currently. Yeah, again, staying focused on shipping the initial level, and that just opens up a whole new set of work to do that I don't just don't think is worth the effort, at least not until you've mastered the main game. Uh, for now, the mech pilot, um, there's some stuff that's outside of the Leopard, according to the story missions at the beginning of the game and such. Um, so yes, but mostly no to your question. It's mostly the Leopard. I think we've answered that in the co-op thing. I think we're still considering some kind of accumulated progression slash transfer back to their world, but it's it's just a consideration at the moment. It'd be nice, but at the same time, we're not looking to create like a deep you know server infrastructure here or uh, anything like that. And also don't want to ruin their single player experience if they play with their friend for 12 hours and go back and then jump forward and miss a third of the game anyhow on their, their storyline. So, um, Mostly, you're you're going into other people's um, other people's campaigns, or they're playing in yours, or you're playing in instant action managers with each other. Crouching. Now that's news to me. If I could ever crouch in MechWarrior one, two, three, four, I didn't know it. At least I don't remember. Quadrupeds. Pretty cool thought to see something in. Uh, I think it has more chance in MechWarrior 5. I'll put it that way. Um, we mentioned at MechCon that our super pirate Corsair mech is going to have a part in the storyline as someone you need to talk, deal with. And, you know, that's so that's. I could see a quadruped kind of fitting in in a similar way. Um, no promises at the moment, but I like your idea. Uh, yeah, Spectre, there is um, collision. Obviously, there's um, you, you're colliding with buildings. You've seen the demo. There's essentially nothing you can't smash and walk through and run through, or even the large, huge buildings can be pretty much stripped away. Um, and, yes, when you stomp on a vehicle, uh, you are taking damage. So that's going to kind of scale with the size of mech you're in and stuff. So, yeah, there is. And there's other kind of small destructibles that are like, uh, you know, like uh, gas containers that you hit and those blow up and you actually take damage. So, yes, absolutely. Uh, the game is going to be designed for 4K. So pretty sure the answer to your, your question is you shouldn't look at Micro Online in any way as thinking about, all, you know, that things you're going to have a problem with scaling. Um, everything is to be designed to scale and work properly in the 4K monitors. So the answer is uh, you should be set. I think we answered that next one. There's some concerns around complexity for new players. That's going to be better. Tutorial, 
easy starting missions, good third person cameras, um, co-op play with friends that are fighting PVE. I hope so. Thanks. Um, lagging does work like MWL at the moment, but I still think you can kill by dismemberment. I'm not sure. Those aren't mutually exclusive things, are they? You just can blow off this arm, that arm, that torso, that torso, that leg, you know, and chip away at the whole mech and turn it into a pogo stick. Uh, we did flirt with the notion of making the mech not die until both legs are destroyed. We had it like that for a bit, kind of chickened out, went back to, um, Sorry, it does take two mechs, two legs to destroy the mech. What I meant to say is the mech did not destroy with two legs destroyed. It, so I'm starting to get tired. Both legs destroyed did not cause the mech to die. It was basically just slowed down even further. So it was just kind of barely limping around and spinning in circles and fighting. And we played around with that. I kind of liked it. Others didn't. So we kind of chickened out went back to a mech is destroyed on both legs missing. Yeah, that, that almost made it in for the MacCon demo. <laughs> we'll see. You know, we'll take some pains, keep playing with it, but it doesn't seem like it's going to make it. Um, I mean, it's, Eject really didn't have a purpose in the game. The game is really designed around your lance mates and AI pilots can be destroyed and die and everything, but uh, not you. Uh, the mission isn't going to just, like, carry on with your AI lance mates finishing the mission without you. Um your mech can't be destroyed. You need to be, you need to stay upright. So no real need to eject. I think we answered death from Bob really just putting that into, although I guess it's a little different than, um, you know, knockdowns and such. Um, certainly just applying damage on a, does that work currently, Alex? And not the moment, no, but there is definitely a clear distinction between, you know, like uh, applying damage on collision and, and extending that to things like falling on a mech, you know, that's yeah. more achievable, I think, for us in the time frame. But I think, as yeah. with like a yeah, with a full death from above mechanic, you know, the mech that you're crushing uh, behaves in a way you might want it to. That's uh, a little, a little uh, more complex. I think it could work pretty well. You just you wouldn't even if the mech that you you totally landed on wouldn't fall to the ground with the full custom like fall down animations, but your capsules, you might smash it right on top of its shoulder or head, and then there might be some kind of capsule sliding down to the ground while it takes significant damage if it dies, and of course it's going to fall over and die. But there is something that we can play with. We'll see. Oh, salvage. Um, uh, I don't remember Mercs well enough, Mech, Mech 2 Mercs well enough. I, I talked about this this morning, but a lot of these design ideas we've had for years, and it turns out in the end, it's fairly similar to Battletech's. Um, I'm going to quickly say, because we've only got a couple minutes left, but you have negotiation points um, that you earn through doing missions. You spend those negotiation points to improve your position in getting perhaps more salvage or better salvage or a number of various things. And sometimes then you'll choose that salvage you know, that you get. And you'll be choosing from a pool, like a number out of a pool. So there is a lot of similarity to Battletech, but I don't see us necessarily doing like the one-third chassis type thing. You probably will just, you know, like loot an entire chassis, but that won't be gameable. You're not just going to be going out and like headshotting everything and then seeing all these chassis on the loot table. Is You're going to be negotiating with your contract on how much um, salvage you can get. And then it potentially take significant amount of negotiation points to make chassis. Um, available to be chosen and choosing, you know, a chassis might take up um, significant amounts of the, the salvage. So there'll be limits and certainly like looting an entire like chassis from the battlefield is going to be something that's going to be difficult or maybe even rare or impossible in the, in the lower level reputation ranks. But as you get more and more elite and more and more chances and opportunity for that kind of thing to happen. Um, so I think it's kind of like biotech, you know, mixed with a few different ideas. We kind of answered the cockpit items. No cockpit items yet at the moment. No real reason we can't. It's just, it's not really focused. Um, 
because I answered this this morning, but at this moment, there's like there's no micro trans micro transactions. It's not that you'd have the micro transaction cockpit items; you could just have them. But full pattern support initially, and we haven't really kind of reached inside the cockpit at this point for you know what we might do. Yeah, you, I mean, person inviting the others into their game, I believe, is the host. So there's there's a few things we can still tweak on that, but I think the host will be inviting players into their. Um, I would say the Mech Warrior information warfare type stuff is going to be very similar, similar to Mech Warrior Two, like managing radar being Mech Warrior Five. So I don't really remember what you mean by Mech Warrior Two. I would say um, it's fairly similar to Mech Warrior Online in that, you know, if your AI teammates have a line of sight on someone, that will give you the target information so that you can lob your LMs in and etc. Uh, it has more of a deeper system in place like that compared to the older games. And then we did customization. I like the question about tying in Far Country. <laughs> I think I missed that one. Where is it? Any just uh, in the little further below. Any plans for Far Country tie-in missions? Yeah, the alien races play a significant role in this game. No, they don't. No, they're no Far Country tie-in. Um, yeah. Did they actually have an alien tie-in in Beck Warrior? Yeah, it was. Yeah. I'm not going to go into it now, but you should. Uh, All right. No. It's storied, storied history. No lamb mechs. Um, no. We have to be creating totally different environments to support that. Uh, okay. One or two more. <laughs> um I think Duke Pilot, obviously, you're doing missions for the Inner Sphere. Uh, da, 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 da. so they're kind of. I think the answer to Hayden is is yes. I mean, you're primarily. I think you're going to be fighting for like the main great houses. I'm not really sure if we're going to be. Although there'll be moments in story missions and whatnot where you're, you know, you're fighting for, you know, Draconis combined, and then maybe, you know, there's a particular um, house unit um, on the other side. So I think the answer is yes to that, but. Primarily think of it as fighting for the great house themselves. Yeah, a couple there. Like it almost so a question about numbering, numbering a MechWarrior five and whether or not we would. Uh, just consider a reboot and call it MechWare, that would almost feel wrong, you know? It would feel a little inappropriate, um, I think, for me personally. Yeah. Um, you know, the 2009 MechWare, a lot of people started calling it MechWare 5, but that's kind of what we're doing. We just called it MechWare, and it was kind of like a reboot. So um, I think for a few reasons. One, coming off of MechWare Online and being in this position where we had, like, a 1,000 Mech variants, and, and it just was so kind of obvious that we would be so well suited to creating a mercenaries edition because we had a, such an advantage that the past micro games didn't have that we could flood the markets of the inner sphere with actually, you know, lots of unique content. Plus think of micro line again, we've got all the faction skins for all the various factions of the inner sphere. Um, we've got um, all the patterns that you put on the max, got all the, um, you know, weapon models, and chassis, and, and we could really flood the market and create this um, feeling that people, I know, like me, and knowing playing the past games, longed for. It's like, um, you know, if I think back to playing, you know, even you know, Mech Warrior Four Mercs, let's say, it's very, um, I, li I like the game, but it was very linear, and you just kind of who were you were, and you were fighting very little choice, like you know, maybe the ordering of three or four missions before you move on, and. And this is, I kind of always felt like MechWarrior 1 actually had more freedom in so many ways. You could travel around to various places and fight for whomever. So in some ways, this is, it just, it is a reboot in a sense because I kind of view MechWarrior 1 as being the original Mercenaries game. Um, it wasn't called that. It was just MechWarrior. But uh, I think it's kind of the original Mercenaries game. Then you had MechWarrior 2 Mercenaries and MechWarrior 4 Mercenaries. In some ways, I view this kind of as a reboot. It's almost like MechWarrior 1 meets, you know, Unreal 4 2019 
and you know what that would look like so it gives you an answer but i think that's all we can do today i am so tired and it's seven and there's gonna be so many more of these guys um hopefully we still have things to talk about in a while so we're gonna separate out in the future we'll do art ones we'll do modding ones we'll do mission ones and uh there's so many more opportunities there's we're gonna do try to do two a month and there's like almost eight months left so there could be up to 15 more of these things uh so maybe we'll stop them once we get to beta or something if, if there's no point to it but certainly there's a bunch more and uh if we didn't get your question sorry but thanks for hanging out i hope you got some good information and i can't wait to do it again yeah thanks everyone thank you guys i uh, will let you know in the announcements next time we uh, schedule another ama so just keep an eye on this discord and we'll, we'll most likely also announce it on the social medias. Thanks for being here. All right. Good night, everyone.